Hi, this is Lisa Derby Odin, and I'm the Project Development Coordinator with Mass MEP. And I am here today with Ali Latfi, who is the president for Lacerda Group. And so I'd like to welcome you, Ali, and um, maybe you can tell us all a little bit more about yourself and about Lacerda Group. Sure. Uh, yes, thank you, Lisa. Um, Ali Latfi, I'm president of Lacerda Group. Uh, we are a family owned business. Uh, we started in 1993 in um, different area recycling of data storage product. And today we are in manufacturing of uh, food packaging for uh, uh, processors and brands and so forth. And uh, <coughs> I have two partners. Uh, they, they've been together since beginning. Uh, one is my brother, Mori, and the other one, my cousin, Mustafa. And we have a number of family members that they've been working the business, uh, uh, some from the beginning, my wife, Denise, and then now I have two daughters that they work there. Uh, I have uh, my cousins, two of his sons, they work here. So, and um, we have uh, uh, four uh, buildings here in Massachusetts, uh, in the park uh, near, uh, in Mansfield, uh, where we do production in three of them, and then warehouse and inventory in two or three of them. And also we have a facility in Chatworth, uh, California, right outside of Los Angeles. Wow, that's, that's really amazing. Um, the story about how you started out with data storage and then shifted to custom packaging. So I'm thinking with that kind of a background, that probably made it not so hard of a stretch for you to think about pivoting into face shield production. I was gonna ask about how, you, how do you move from you know, custom packaging into face shields. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that and about your experience with the uh, Manufacturing Emergency Response Team or MERT. I mean, part of our strength is uh, that uh, in a market that is our ability to respond to our customer needs quickly. And we also have a lot of resources in house in terms of design capability, mold making, tool making, and then productions of plastics, you know, extruding um, sheet for our applications. In this case, would be for uh, face shield, and mm -hmm. then also being able to ramp up very quickly our productions and scale it up to volume that we can support the need of the market. Uh, so, mm, giving those capability, it helped us in this case to respond to the COVID. I, we had an inquiry that came to my cousins from one of the hospitals that they were looking for some help in the in terms of some PPE and uh, we designed one quickly and we were able to get a prototype in a day or two and uh, once the, it seemed like we made a couple of adjustments and we were able to tool up in less than a week and uh, subsequently being able to tool up additional equipment. Uh, so we were able to get our productions to about three to 400,000 a day. Wow. Uh, a shield, and we duplicated those tools, one of them. We shipped them to California. So we had also capability there. We do have a sister company in Mexico. So we gave them the design, we helped them with that. And also we have a supplier in Honduras where we also supply them the design and build the tooling and ship to them so they can produce for their own market and South American market very quickly. Wow. And so have you, you've been involved with the emergency response team here in Massachusetts? Yes? Uh, to a point, yes. I've been in touch with them. Uh, yeah, can also... you tell us a little bit about what your involvement with them has been and what your experience with them has been? Right. So part that I have been involved in is by working with the local hospitals, uh, Mass General and uh, Partners Group, people from uh, the universities, Harvard and so forth to develop a face shield that meets their requirements. Okay. So we've been working with them. And then we've been in touch with the uh, state in terms of seeing if we can help them with any needs they may have in terms of uh, uh, face shield or other things that we can design and develop very quickly. 
That's great because it does. It sounds like you have um, a, a good uh, production capacity there. Yes. So can you talk a little bit about um, things that maybe you've discovered, the positive things, the successes, and things that, that have come out of your efforts of being an essential employer during these COVID-19 days? I mean, first, you know, we, when we started this, we also helped and donated a lot of face shield to hospitals, to um, fire department, police stations, elderly home, um, nursing home, and people that they reached out to us, we either ship them, deliver them, and it's been great to see people, how grateful they are for that our employee that have put in together to be there. We received several letters from local police and others that they appreciate the, what we have uh, helped to step in because in the beginning really was confused. Nobody know what's best for yeah. them and how to approach this. And uh, also couldn't find uh, uh, the right, you know, either face shield or mask and then, uh, and so forth. And, uh, and the other side has been also uh, interesting to see how the excited our employees they were that they are contributing and helping in this process and being, uh, you know, doing something positive for the situation that we were in and helping the community. And, uh, and it's been great again hearing back from our employees that they're so happy that they're doing this and helping and uh, they all stepped up. Uh, we, you know, we've been in production, so haven't stopped one day since the COVID has hit. Wow. Uh, and um, every employee has made, you know, great effort to be at work and do their parts. So it's been good. That's really wonderful. A a anytime I hear about companies that have, you know, stepped up and made those donations like you like you're talking about, it it it's so heartwarming, really, and it, it really brings a smile to my face. And I know during these very challenging days, it's always nice to be able to have that smile. Well, we've been um, fortunate to be in that position to be able to help. It's been great. Yeah. Well, we thank you for that for sure. You. So, you know, it's great that there's successes, but along with that also come some challenges, um, certainly. And can you talk about maybe a challenge that's arisen and, and any creative solutions that you've been able to come up with to deal with those challenges? So, um, part of the challenges is being um, not knowing what the market needs. Yeah. And when they need it. And uh, everybody in the beginning was uh, scrambling to find solutions, material, and so forth. And, uh, and for us, it was challenging because uh, we had to shift our extrusion capacity from producing material for our own uh, customers to make face shield material. And then go outside and buy material to uh, compensate for what we needed for our own regular day-to-day -day production. <laughs> so juggling those, finding the right material, find, uh, when uh, everybody was uh, pushed for capacity, uh, we were able to get material from a lot of places to be able to uh, offset what we were dedicating resources to the face shield. And not, again, from that perspective, you know, fair shield has short shelf life, uh, not shelf life, but short life. And right. when you are producing 300, 350,000 a day, quickly you can put over a million pieces in your inventory and you're not sure if you're going to move those or uh, be interested on in using those and uh, not. And then at the same time, you know, you develop a design and you go through your due diligence and do some testing. But there are a lot of competing design out there that people, they may lean to that. So maintaining those productions and being able to figure out how to do it so you can supply your customers or the needs are, that are out there and at the same time meeting your day-to-day -day, uh, production requirements is, you know, those have been challenging and, uh, and still continue to be challenged because uh, we get a call uh, and uh, suddenly somebody wants a million piece and wow. they're not sure they keep talking about it and then they may pull a trigger and they may not. And we get those anywhere from, you know, 
a pallet to 20 to 30 million facial wow. uh, inquiries and how do you or manage those and and if it hit how do you shift your resources from your day-to-day -day production to these so you can meet the commitment that you made to the, the face shield customer. You know, it does sound like um, everybody in your company has sort of gone the extra mile in order to make those things happen. So that's certainly commendable. Um, are there changes in legislation or regulation that would have helped you better or say going forward if this kind of a thing were to happen again um you know or are, is there anything that's kind of gotten in your way along those lines in trying to participate in the covid19 response i'm not aware of any legislations or anything that uh, you know fda came out with uh, saying that they don't have any guidelines and they're okay as long as you use material that are safe for contact and all of that. From the, the institutions and uh, other organizations that they're looking for face shield, they're all looking for some type of uh, process that you validated the face shield or uh, there are some FDA approved and so it's been a little bit challenging to communicate that with the customers and potential users that there is no such a requirement at this point. Right. And really we haven't had a chance to do any extensive of have third party testing, evaluate our product, and come back with some type of report. You know, we work with Mass General, those guys, they did a great deal of testing. They provided some letter that, you know, they've been using it and they're okay with that but no official testing to so that has been challenging for because we for example we uh, participated in tender for unicef for you know millions of fish yeah. and uh, one of the question was you know do you have any validations and testings from but it's like really nobody knows what to do. So that, those have been the confusing part. You know? Right. Um, how do you, you know, supply those type of information when there's no guideline, there's no standards or nothing that, uh, on what basis you're testing this. Yeah, I can imagine that would be a challenge. Um, so taking a, a little look sort of down the road, uh, you know, Massachusetts is reopening somewhat successfully, it looks like, um, while the rest of the country, not so much, maybe. Um, what do the next three months look like for you? Are you thinking you're going to see some more spikes in the orders and face shields? And, uh, and, and a, a year down the road, how, what do things look like if you had a crystal ball? Um, I would say that uh, it will be, you know, very sporty is not going to be consistent uh, like for example in may we sold over seven million face shields holy in moly one month, in one month and uh, but you know in june we did a lot less and today we see that trending down and okay. we don't see so we have our tooling is ready, we can switch in a matter of a day or two and start extruding material for that and go to production within, you know, if need to, we can be in production tonight and start extruding. Once we hang up the phone, we can tell our machine, you know, our operators to change the machine and start producing material for face chip, put the tooling in in a couple of hours and we can be up and running. Um, you know, obviously, where we have to take a look at the commitment we have with our other regular customers, how to take resources or put overtimes or other things to be able to meet the requirement. But I don't see a face shield to continue to be as demanding as face mask will be. But definitely yeah. face mask would be uh, one product that is going to be continued to be used extensively. Yeah, yeah, I think you're probably right on that. And And I suppose once you've you know, kind of gone into face shield production once, you've already sort of laid, laid the groundwork for how, how to get that up and going again pretty quickly. So yeah, that- Yeah, we can respond within a day with that. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of good sense. So um, do you have any closing words for us that you'd like to share? I mean, as I said earlier, you know, uh, this is uh, the COVID situation is a serious one and we've been fortunate to be able to um, step up and help uh, employees. They all been great to step up and then at the same time, you know, as a manufacturer, we have to stay open and, uh, and we've been able to um, provide some resources to our employees to create as safe as a space that we can and continue to support the market. And um, hope this ends quickly because it's a lot of confusion yeah. in the market. Yeah, yep, I can and, imagine. You know, a lot of people are scared and uh, so. Definitely. Okay, well, I want to thank you very much again, Ali, for taking some time to um, share your views with us here today. And uh, fingers crossed that things continue on an upward trend here in Absolutely. Massachusetts and across the country. Right, yeah. Definitely. We need to get out of this situation. <laughs> That's good. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for hey. your time. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for reaching out to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. Bye-bye.